Hey everybody, welcome to the next to last installment of Kadoka. I'm going to be recording this all night, so um, I'm going to be doing what I can to finish it tonight. This is going to suck. Um, this is going to be actually a long episode. I'm going to be trying to uh, fill in what I can for you guys today. And, uh, yeah. Rock beats water or air beats water? Air beats rock, fire beats air, water beats... Okay. I think I made the wrong choice there, but I don't know. I keep forgetting. Roman nuts, who knew? Anyway, um... Need nitroglycerin to get through the wall. Going up. James has decided to remain in the laboratory in order to mix nitroglycerin. I'm going to begin my work. Can you two wait for me here? <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> what happened to the girl, Melody? <laughs> she was gone the next morning. She left exactly everything in the room. <laughs> you don't know what to look with women, do you? <laughs> Well, you know what they say. The cleanest breakups is when a woman runs out of you. What a But you're lucky. I mean to have so many people to kid around with. For me, I'm all alone. No, I've been all alone all my life. What about your childhood? <laughs> yes, I did have a childhood. I was born in a small town in Wales, right off the banks of the Tulesian River. It was a small gypsy town. Gypsy? That's right. Gypsy. And we didn't call ourselves gypsy. We called ourselves Rom. <laughs> See, a true gypsy is born under the blue sky and is destined to die under the same blue sky. You know gypsy are. So then I guess you plan on dying underneath the blue skies. Every gypsy is given a name at birth. My given name was Slato. Slato? Mm hmm It's got a strange resonance to that name. What does it mean? I can't tell you. <laughs> that too must be part of the law. <laughs> a lot it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, ever since I met you, enigmatic, mysterious glint in your eyes. Mind, it must be the gypsy in you. A glance from thy soul-searching eye can raise with hope, depress with fear. Byron again? Yeah. You must really like him, don't you? Yes. So I feel as though we're birds of a feather. Then he must be self-obsessed as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather be classified as a romantic. My father was a strict man. He couldn't forgive his son for failing academically. 
You blame my failure on the time I wasted inventing adventures, dreaming of a utopian landscape. I was brought up to believe that dreams, the power of the imagination, as well as all the things I loved as a child, were useless, a complete waste of time. It was as if he was telling me I was useless. And again, it may be just that. I think I was probably born too late. By the time I was 15, everything there was to be done had already been done. The Western territories were colonized. The jungles had been explored. There was no wilderness for me to wander into. Jungles for me to cut my way through. I guess that's how I ended up roaming the country. Well, granted, I picked a few fights along the way, played with fire, gave up on my life a few times. But none of that comes close to the truth I'm searching for. I yearn for something far greater. I can't quite explain myself. But it's just I'm on a quest for some intangible treasure of sorts. Kadok, I envy you. you have psychic powers that few are blessed with. Being born a gypsy, you can choose to live how you wish. And who gave you the right to act as if you figured me out? Do you have any idea how I was raised? <laughs> you make me laugh. Adventures. Please, you haven't the slightest clue. Do you have any idea how much pain my psychic powers have brought me? My father died when I was only a child. I predicted the exact time, place, and ending of my father's life. Imagine that, predicting your own father's death. Hmm. <laughs> you know, I was cursed as a child, being given powers not meant for a child. And my mother, oh, she, she was so frightened and so full of hatred for me. She tried to kill me with her very hands. And gypsy elves got together and decided to excommunicate me. I was only nine then. Do you have any idea how a nine-year-old child survives without the help of a living soul? Treasures, you must be joking. Have you ever cried and begged for your next meal? Did you ever sell your body seeking shelter from the frigid night air? <laughs> I used to be just like Charlotte. When she cried and said, No one has ever loved me. Oh, her words cut straight through me. It was me she was talking about. Just like her, I wish that everybody would die and harbor a hatred for all mankind. But you see, Charlotte has made her peace. And <laughs> gone ever. Me, I'm still alive. No one has ever lent a helping hand. No one! Could that be you? I'm not as free as you make me out to be. I am a poor, dirty, ignorant woman. <laughs> a gypsy died to the dogs in order to live. Someone like me can't do good. It was with my powers. I can 
from ease and pain. Uh, that's, that's when I feel good about living. <laughs> I don't need to be loved. I want my life to have some meaning. And someone tell me they need me. It's done. It's completed. Okay, um, yeah. That was all stuff that could have been fleshed out earlier, but instead it's kind of suffering from, uh, war movie syndrome, because, yeah. Any of you watching who actually know what the heck I'm talking about, good for you. And, uh, I'm gonna try and capture as many cutscenes as I can in this, uh, about 20 minutes or so, I'm gonna cut this one and start a new recording. Just because, uh, my recording software has been prone to crashing today, and it's just, I don't want to risk it. So, yeah. As soon as I get uh, past this door, not this door, but uh, this door, cutscene arama begins. That's kind of cool. I'm not gonna lie. Still like that cutscene. It's amazing. Yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of weird. I could probably grind here for levels, but I don't want to. Not right now. Huh. Casket must have been dragged. I can't kind of, er, I can't do that. So, what else is here? Uh, oh, staircase. Hey, what do you know? No, I haven't actually pre-played this, no matter what my Twitter says. Speaking of which, you guys should probably follow me on it. You know, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff, too. Uh, Pipe Organ Rune Keys. Hey, I remember. Remember all the way back whenever I had that, uh, thing that was absolutely, like, bolded on those? And told me a combination? Yeah. Yeah, those were the words, and that's the thing I was talking about. So, here he goes. That's a sour note. That's the sound of something moving. I was hoping to do without a fight. What the heck is that little thing? Action magic, kill it with fire.
Phew. Little creepy baby thing is dead. Water. Of course you're gonna hit him, he's the only one without a magic defense. his vitality. I should have been doing that from the start, thinking about it. Should have been upping his uh, piety and that as well, and making him a uh, actual It's Patrick's body caught in vines. Just so everybody knows, that's uh, kind of what they were looking at. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it. Are you sure? Let's proceed. St. Daniel Scotius, protect us from these evil spirits and grant us inner strength. Amen. up running through a window, so somebody smashes the lantern, and fire. These worked whenever I, uh, first recorded it, and, uh, yeah. I'm sorry that they don't work now, but I'm trying to get you as many as I can here. And I know my playthrough isn't, uh, actually the greatest of playthroughs, so... Hooray, battle! Finds of the Tree of Life. but I don't care. But they're all catching fire. Now. He doesn't have any level 2s, but he's gonna kill at least one of them. Because this is gonna move away. The others are gonna close in and they're gonna make the gap smaller. Yeah, like I said, have a practice with it all. a mini boss battle. Not quite as bad as the one later on, but this is a mini boss battle. And after this battle, I'm cutting this episode.
Huh. Not sure why I thought that would work. Okay, um, I'll see you guys next episode.